So now we have seen that in MSI, even when we have an intervention, we need to write to memory every time we have a cache to cache transfer. So for example, C1 has the block in the M state, because it just wrote it. C2 wants to read the data, so it puts a read request on the bus. C1 responds with the data, so now C2 has the data, but C1 can no longer just write to this block, so C1 gets the block in the shared state, C2 gets the block in the shared state, and that's why the memory had to grab the data when C1 was responding. Now what can happen is C2 writes, so it sends an invalidation because it already has the data. Now C1 gets invalid state, C2 gets the modified state, and then let's say this read-write behavior moves to a, another core like C1, so pretty much if one core reads and writes, then another one reads and writes and so on, we can have a repetition of this. So pretty much the data is kind of moving around the caches, but the problem is every time it moves between caches, the memory also gets written, and the memory doesn't have as much bandwidth as the caches do. So the problem really is that here we needed to do a memory write. Another problem occurs because when C2 has written, for example, and has the data in the modified state, and then C2 responds with data, and that causes a memory write, we again get C1 has the block in shared state, C2 has the block in shared state. Now if C3 reads, because both of these have the block in the shared state, the memory provides the data, so we have memory reads here, even though one of these could have responded with the data if we only knew which of the two should respond. Definitely both of them should not respond. So if we had a way to tell which one of them should respond, we could avoid this memory read by the one that is responsible for responding, providing the data as long as there are new requesters. This can happen a lot of times. So if another core reads, same thing, we get the memory read, although now there are three cores with the data in the shared state, and so on. We want to avoid the update to memory as long as there is a cache that still holds the most recent value of the block, and we want to avoid memory reads if there is a cache that can provide this block. Because again, memory bandwidth is a lot lower than cache bandwidth, and also memory reads and writes are a lot more expensive in terms of power and latency than cache reads and writes. But to do this, we need to make a non-modified version of the block in one of the caches responsible for giving data to other caches when they want it so that the memory doesn't need to respond, and eventually writing the block to memory so that the memory doesn't need to be updated every time we do something like this. So what we really need to know is which of the shared copies is the one responsible. And we will know this by introducing another state called O, which stands for owned. So there will be one owner of the block if others are sharing it. The O state will behave just like the shared state, except that whenever there is a request for the data in the block, the owner is the one of the sharers that gets to respond, and also, if the owner replaces the block from the cache, it gets to write back to memory so that we ensure that memory gets updated.